Hey guys, and welcome to the video. So I was recently browsing the Terraria wiki and I happened to find myself on the Fallen Star page where I learned some things that I didn't know about how stars spawn. Apparently, it's probability based, so you could technically get zero stars in a night if you're super unlucky, but on the other hand, you could also get thousands of stars in a night. Another thing that I learned was that the probability of the stars to spawn is different depending on your world size. So after I read all of this, I had a few things that I wanted to do involving Fallen Stars. First, I wanted to collect some stars stars on the three world sizes for multiple nights to see how close the statistical average my tests would be. Second, I wanted to see what the most stars I could manage to get in a single night would be. And finally, I wanted to design a way to collect as many stars as possible before the night ends, so that in a non-journey mode world where you can't freeze time, you would still be able to collect a bunch of stars. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering those very three things. And now that I've covered that, let's get into the results of the first test. After collecting stars for 20 nights in a small world, this is what I found. We can see that the amount of stars stayed pretty consistent around 30 to 50 per night. But there's one other thing that I have yet to talk about, and this is the new meteor shower event that was added in 1.4. There's actually two levels to the meteor showers, which I didn't know. One increases the fallen star rates by about 50%, and the other increases it by around 2 to 400%. So you can see on nights 9 and 20, the star count broke 60, and these were both minor meteor shower nights, so it makes sense that they would have higher values than the average. And speaking of the average, taking all 20 nights stars, I found that the average stars for the small worlds was 43.6 pretty close to what we would expect. Now, taking a look at the medium world, we can see much more variation in the number of stars that fell every night. Here on night 4, I only received 27 stars, which was the lowest recorded night for my entire test, even lower than all of the tests from the small world. However, I also had this meteor shower night that gave me 79 stars, and this one that gave me 70. The average number of stars that I found for the medium world was 46, not much greater than the small world average and quite a bit lower than the expected 61.7. I would assume that if I had continued testing for more nights, the average would have grown closer to the value we expected, but since I only tested 20 nights, the data appeared quite low. Unlike the medium world, the large world stayed pretty consistent. I did however have this major meteor shower here that resulted in 296 stars, as well as these smaller but still substantial meteor showers here and here. The average number of fallen stars that I found for the large world was 101, which is quite a bit higher than the expected 81, however, if I remove the these meteor showers from the calculation, the average becomes 84, an almost perfect match. Now, I think the reason that the large world saw such a significant boost from the meteor showers, while the other two world sizes stayed relatively close to their statistical averages, is because the large world already has a high chance of spawning stars. So when the meteor shower event multiplies this chance by 4, the resulting probability is a lot higher than any of the other worlds can achieve. But with that, I've completed my first test, so on to the second one. During the large world testing, I did manage to get 296 stars in a night, which was by far the most stars that I got in any of the tests. But I wanted to get even higher, so I loaded back into the large world and surveyed another 50 nights. And when this was all said and done, I managed to get 342 stars in one night. To put this into perspective, you could make almost 7,000 Jester Zeros with that many stars not too shabby. Now, the final thing that I wanted to cover in this video is the best way to collect fallen stars. In a normal playthrough, you can't freeze time, so this means that I needed to collect stars in a way that allowed me to wait until the night was almost over, and then quickly grab them all at the end. This way, I could let as many stars spawn as possible before I went to collect them. Now, the first thing that came to mind when I was thinking of ideas was Edward's video where he used Hoiking to bring all of the fallen stars to the center of the map, and this method works pretty well, but there's two problems with it. First, if I built the Hoik platform across the entire world, it would still take the stars a decent amount of time to reach the center where I would be collecting them, meaning I would lose the last hour or so of stars depending on where in the world they had landed. And the second problem is that this method became partially broken in 1.4. See, before when a fallen star hit a hammered block, it would phase into them and begin Hoiking immediately. But in 1.4, the stars impact the top of the blocks and get stuck above. So this means that if I wanted to use Hoiking for this collection method, I would need to include Oxuate. And after thinking about it for a bit, I settled on this design here. I have these small sections of blocks that I can actuate to hoik the stars, and in between these sections, I have a chain of teleporters. Now if you're curious why I haven't uploaded a video in about a week, this is why. Making this crazy long teleporter chain took forever, even with t-edit, but I did manage to complete it. And I found that when it is used, it has around a 95% efficiency, meaning that out of every 100 stars that fall in a world, you should be able to collect around 95 of them. 
them. How it works is I have a long counter that is set up at the center of the world, and as an input to this counter, I have a Hoik engine, which makes it count up extremely quickly. And then I just simply took all of the outputs from the counter and connected them to the teleporters in a sequence from left to right. When using these teleporters, it takes around 10 seconds to cross the world. So, around 15 seconds before the night ends, I actuate the blocks and let the stars fall. Then, I turn the blocks back on to a solid state which allows the stars to hoik to the teleporters. And finally, 10 seconds before the night is over, I activate the teleporter chain and collect the stars. And with that, I have satisfied my curiosity with Fallen Stars. If you guys are interested in live content, I've recently started a quest on my Twitch where I'm trying to fully complete the journey mode inventory by researching every item in the game. If you'd like to watch, there will be a link in the description of this video. But with that out of the way, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.